Hi, I'm Liz Nedden. We're going to look at time series and an example of seasonality. Here are our key ideas. So we, first of all we get two graphs coming out of our data and on the graph on the left hand side we first want to identify is there a repeating pattern, that's the key. Then we look at the second graph and if we have this repeating pattern we want to look to see do we, what, where is the peak, where is the trough, so where is the highest and lowest points and how much above or below the trend line those points are. So if I take the actual data, what they've done to get the graph on the left hand side is they've gone and they've taken one year's worth of data and copied and pasted that, then they've taken the next year's data, copied and pasted that and so on. So they've just cut this data into these slices and then they've stacked them on top of each other and that gives us our graph on the left hand side. To get the graph on the right hand side they've just taken the average of those. So when we find the average through the middle of that, that's what how they've got that value. So let's have a look at the example. So here's our sea ice in Antarctica. So the first thing we want to do is identify do we have a seasonal graph, yes or no. So is there a consistent seasonal pattern? And I can see that all of the values first of all head down, then they go upwards, then they go downwards. So that pattern is the same for all years. So that tells me yes I do have a consistent seasonal pattern. So that's the first thing I'm going to note is I have a consistent seasonal pattern. Then I'm going to look at the graph on the right and I'm going to find where is it at its highest and lowest. So we can see there that the low point is down there and the highest point is up here. So that happens in the second month of the year which is our February and it happens in the ninth month of the year which is September. So this is what we want to do now is to write a little about this. So we can say the peak season, where it's highest, that happened in September. And the trough season, where it was at its lowest, was in February. Now we're going to go back and look for the values, those peak and trough values. So what I want to do is from that peak value, I want to just look across and say where does that value fall and equally the same for my trough value, find out where that comes across. So that's around about, let's say 6.5-ish to 7, because um, that line's not perfectly straight. Um, and same with my one down the bottom, my trough, that's probably about negative 8.5. So the key now when I come to interpret this is that I want to identify whether it's above or below the trend. So this zero line that goes across the middle, that zero line, that is the trend line itself. Okay, so I'm just going to write a note, that is my trend line. And what we want to do is identify how much above the trend does that month. So how much more sea ice is there in September? And equally, how much, on average, how much less sea ice is there in February? So we're looking to see how much above or below the trend line we are. And remember this is about sea ice, so it's about the surface area of sea ice. So our peak value, let's say that's around about 7 million square kilometres. Oh, hang on. 7 million square kilometres. And our trough value is about negative 8.5 million square kilometres. Now we can get those values far more accurately when you're in NZ Grapher and you put the cursor over the graph, it'll show you those values exactly. So where we want to write about that. So the first thing I've done here is write about the fact that I've got a consistent seasonal pattern. So I can say looking at the seasonal graph, there is a consistent seasonal pattern. Now I'm going to put that into context, it's about our sea ice. So it's where the surface area of sea ice, my variable, is sm um, smallest in February and largest in September. So I've identified when it is high and when it is low. Then I'm going to go on to interpret our 
both for February and September values. So we can say the surface area in February is approximately 8.5 million square kilometres below the trend. And now this is where I want to add in my research and connect and tell the story. And so it's likely that that surface area is smallest in February because at the end it's the end of summer and so the sea water has slowly warmed up over the entire summer and so the sea temperature is going to be at its highest which will mean the sea ice will have melted to some level. Equally when we talk about September we know it's approximately 6.9 million square kilometres above the trend and in September that is end of winter so at the end of winter we've had all winter to f for the ice to freeze and so that's why it's likely that the surface area of sea ice is at its largest at that point in time.